Guiding us through this new story is a young gamer named Ming Fei. While admiring his crush's beauty, the lad received a challenge from someone named Nono. The main man starts gaming as if his life is depending on it, building new structures, upgrading stuff, and moving his magic fingers as fast as possible. Yet one needs more than speed when facing an opponent with brains. After Nono tells him to just give up as he is fighting a losing fight, Ming Fei gets back to his seat in disappointment. Likewise, Nono is sitting in the back of a car wondering why the principal of their highly esteemed college wanted that boy to join the school, while also wondering why would he be in S rank. Thus, Nono did what any rational person with questions would do. She went to the internet, or in this case, an AI hottie who breaks down Ming Fei's life to be ordinary, boring, and lonely as he doesn't have that many friends. What he does have, though, is a crush on his classmate and shitty relatives taking care of him since his mother is not there to look out for him. As a result of his life and introverted self, Ming Fei's dreams and aspirations became simple. All he wishes for is to have a new stand and sit in, bask in the sun while making enough money to stay online, a very pleasant and reasonable dream that surprises everyone in the car. But the biggest shock was yet to come as we see Lu Bingfei receives a package from overseas telling him that he is being inducted to a university in Chicago and will be mentored by a professor sent specifically for him. Mingfei's reaction was to hit himself and see if he was dreaming or not. It was kind of funny. But what was funnier is his aunt's reaction. She yelled so loud I had to pause the episode, lower the volume, and continue. As the family rants about how a loser like Mingfei wouldn't be considered to enroll in such a thing, a helicopter crashed the apartment, men stormed out of it, and a tall, good-looking fella stepped out, put a cape on our boy, and bowed before asking him to go with the squad, making everyone to stand there looking stupid. Sadly though, reality is often disappointing as we see it was all in the main character's head that said our boy still scored a mini-victory when the phone rang and his aunt took the call. Everyone soon realized the university thing is for real for real, and they are requesting to see Ming Fei tomorrow at 9. Hence, the next day at top of the morning, Lu Mingfei headed to the hotel where the meeting is taking place only to be taken back when he sees his classmates waiting for the meeting. They talk some crap, but the main man doesn't mind it. All that is occupying his mind is his crush looking all nice and fancy. She goes next and finishes the interview fast. She tries to give Mingfei a heads up about what's waiting for him, but a dude blocks him. When the main man steps inside the room, he gets startled by golden eyes looking at him. Luckily, the guy catches him in time. The couple asks Ming Fei the first question and he freaks out because, do you believe in aliens? Is not how a normal interview goes, but he still answers in the most ridiculous way. Sure, I believe there must be aliens. Sadly, they asked him to speak normally, which he did when answering the rest of the ridiculous question. Yep, they kept them Reddit questions coming one after the other, till the main man entered his first existential crisis, and after a talk with his inner dog, Ming Fei decided to call it quits and leave the interview. The professor then arrives mad about how his pupil didn't try their best to recruit slash stop the main man from leaving. Speaking about the bottom Rizzler, he has scored not a date, but a hangout with his girl during her goodbye party in the literature club, which prompts him to consider staying home on the off chance he marries the girl, but then home team struck and told him he is going elsewhere. Turns out the professor has invited the fam to a fancy dinner at the hotel in hopes of convincing young Mingfei to enroll in university, and right from the start the prof cuts no corners and shows his utmost interest in the kid and the kid alone, ignoring the uncle and pandering to his aunt cash love. However, Mingfei still wonders why the professor wants him as he himself doesn't see anything special about him, but the prof argues otherwise and hands him a letter from Mingfei's parents who were esteemed students in the university. Stunlocked, Mingfei runs to the bathroom and reads how his mother talks fondly of him asking that the uni takes care of her smart promising boy while she and his father are away continuing their important research, before ending the message with I love you. Reading this, Mingfei broke into tears on the bathroom floor, which turned out to be the women's restroom floor as the redhead pointed out, making the walk back to the table even more embarrassing. When they arrive back, the prof intrudes her to be Nono. Mingfei recalls the name but doesn't draw any connections with the Nono he faced in the game. That was until she reminded him of the line, give up you being beaten by a level 2 base. All these events overwhelmed our boy, who is now considering staying in Japan, freaking everyone sitting at the table, but no no. You see the main character suffering from a severe no BS syndrome, and he simps for his crush so hard, he is willing to say goodbye to his future, before it starts just to stay by her side, and the redhead knew that. So later at night she went to the rooftop where our boy is to talk some sense into him and persuade him to join the university. Seeing his hopeless state, she starts berating him for his lack of initiative before leaving him with advice about how loving someone means going all out for them even if it meant to be embarrassed. Thus, the next day, Ming picks some flowers for his queen and goes to the cinema, where everyone is gathered. 
Two background characters tell him to change his cloth into a suit to be more formal, as the queen wanted it to be like that. When our boy gets out all suited, he gets ridiculed by his classmates. But like the last time, his mind is on the prize, and so he steps on the stage ready to confess his love to everyone. But suddenly, the chubby backgrounder character stops him saying, It's not your spot, I'm supposed to say, I. Before revealing that the whole gang gathered to witness another guy confess for Ming Fei's queen, who by the way, put him on the stage knowingly he liked her. This made our boy question his existence during a dialogue with his inner self. Luckily, a ray of sunshine appeared from nowhere to lighten the dark time Ming Fei is going through. Calling him Ricardo, which is the main character's name in the game if I'm not mistaken, Nono came with her glam squad to give the main man an upgrade makeover, and save him from the hose trap in style. It is revealed that Nono has looked into the queen's messages and found out about the confession, so she stepped behind to save him. Later, she asks him to join the university yet again and tells him that she will look out for him like his big sister. Realizing he has no other path in life and no one to care for him, Ming Fei decided to embrace the unknown and make accept the offer. Yet like all stories, the road to the top starts from rock bottom, just as how we see Ming Fei being called a beggar when asking the guard for the CC train line at an airport. Yep, even by anime standards, a train in an airport is just downright stupid, so it wasn't a surprise when every background character called the main man a bagger, but Ming Fei kept fighting back till a random guy asked for money, then he played the poor card. The man kept trolling Ming Fei till he saw the university card realizing this kid is his new underclassman, Finger played it cool and took him in as well as took his money. At night, when the airport closed, Finger explained that no one knows about the train as it is hidden from the public as well as the school, which is located in the mountains and has no other way to get there but through the train. He also adds, If your rank is high, they pick you up as soon as possible. But if your rank is low, you wait for the train, and they pick you up whenever they feel like it. In other words, Finger rank must be the lowest of the low, as Ming Fei points out. Later, while the main man sleeps, he dreams about some lunatics jumping off a cliff. He wakes up to see the moon at full display. Besides him sits a kid asking if he is ready as shit gonna go down the biblical way, but a goofy Ming Fei doesn't read the room and offers the kid money, which the latter scuffs at saying, so many years, and brother, you're still so kind. Pathetic. Ming Fei snaps out of it when Finger freaks about the idea they might miss the train. A guy looking like he's straight from The Walking Dead, rings the bell and checks for the passengers waiting on the train, he doesn't bat an eye when Finger walks up as the guy is in F rank, the lowest of the low, but when Ming walks up the man turns from a zombie state to a demonic state realizing he's in the presence of an S rank, Finger joins him, and Su Ming Fei joins them after realizing he could have called the train whenever he wanted and there was no reason to wait, as it would change course and drop people aboard just to pick the S rank. Which gets proven true, as soon as Mengfei swaps his car, the airport activates and the speakers announce the trains is coming in hot to pick the S rank, Lu Mengfei. On board is the professor who welcomes the new student with open arms, unlike Finger who gets told to get off, till the orientation ends. First, the prof hands Mengfei a non-disclosure agreement, and then he proceeds to explain to the young lad how their school differs from the quote-unquote normal ones. To put it shortly, the university studies dragons to slay them. Upon hearing that Ming Fei gets shocked as if he's having a meltdown, but as the prof continues, Ming Fei switches to thinking that the guy who is talking to him right now is a crazy person, and the university he speaks of is nothing but an asylum. Suddenly, the lights go off and a pair of golden eyes appear from the dark. It's that kid again, he came to confirm what the professor is saying and even put on a visual demonstration about what happened in the past between a mighty dragon and a group of people that went to slay it. Later, Ming Fei opens his eyes as it seems he has passed out after hearing that dragons exist, that said the main man still doesn't believe it, so another instructor arrives with a case that contains a dragon scale. They tell him to shoot, which he does knocking his ass in the process. The instructor questions if Ming Fei is the real deal since S ranks are supposed to be tough psychically, also he wouldn't be out of pocket if he questioned his mental toughness too as the main man still doesn't believe in dragons even after showing him his sleeping red dragon cub, Ming Fei brushes it off as an animatronic. Suddenly, the dragon opens its eyes and starts headbutting the container and trying to create fire, but the container tech proved resilient and the dragon went back to slumber. Both instructors are amazed that the dragon woke up before time believing that it's Ming Fei's powerful blood called for it and woke it up. Consequently, Ming Fei's blood pressure falls and he almost faints as he feels his worldview getting harder than my math test grades, trust me it was bad. Ming Fei asks if he can drop out now and the professor tells him he can, but if he does his memories will be erased, so the young lad decides to give it a couple of days to make up his mind. When they enter the college campus, Ming Fei notices the ground is empty, the professor freaks out realizing he might have forgotten an important event. 
Suddenly sirens are triggered and a sniper starts shooting. The empty campus grounds turn into a shooting field and the pair rushes to a pillar to hide behind it. But sadly, it isn't big enough to cover the professor's thick ass. His last words were don't forget to pick my class. Truly a teaching role model. However, Mingfei doesn't give a damn about no class. He just doesn't want to die in the crossfire between two factions, who both have snipers shooting the opposite team's members left and right and the fight raged until no one left standing. A voice calls for a guy called Caesar, asking if anyone on his side is left, to which he replies, it's only me and my sniper. Likewise, Han confirms he is alone and his snipers are left standing on their side. So the man suggests for them to end it with an honorable 1v1 showdown. And oh boy, what show they put. The choreography was so fluid, what started as a ground battle evolved into an air fight, the pair were going god mode tearing through floors and sides of buildings. Meanwhile, Mingfei is standing down there looking up like a background character that gets no maidens. But then his new queen came flying down from above, yet his happiness was short-lived as the black team's sniper was behind him with a clear shot on sight. Seeing his senior sister gunned down mercilessly while the other chick celebrates her win, something in Ming Fei snaps, and the little kid comes out of the blue to help his big bro act revenge on everyone. First, the girl gets blasted in the head at point blanks, then Caesar catches a bullet of his own, leaving Zihan to get shot by the sniper. After his work is done, Ming Fei takes a knee and closes his eyes. When he hears music, he opens his eyes again to see more people coming out, thinking the fight has not ended yet. But a bald professor comes out mad about the destruction the kids did during the Liberation Day celebration and scolds Mingfei for participating in it even though he is still a freshman. The OG prof tells him no need to freak out about it, which Mingfei doesn't. Instead, he freaks out about how the professor is still alive to the point the main man switches shows and starts doing Naruto hand signs to combat the evil spirits. The instructors explain to him that the bullets aren't real. They are made from a material that evaporates as soon as it touches the skin, leaving behind powerful sedatives and fake blood stains, which he then demonstrates putting himself back to sleep once again, leaving the bald one to mauled over the campus damages alone. The team leaders argue that they did nothing wrong and abided by the celebration's major rules. However, the instructor doesn't buy this BS and he calls the principal, who to his dismay applauds the kid's performance and encourages them to keep at it, saying the school will take care of the damages, as they are the ones responsible for the celebration day anyways. Then he asks the professor to give the new kid his phone so he can welcome Mingfei, congratulates him in taking on the A-ranks Caesar and Zahan on his first day, and asks him to pick his class, which catches the jealousy of all of his schoolmates. A teacher sitting with the principal questions why he indulges the kids in this celebration, to which the former answers, do you recall eight years ago, we had lots of promising kids, but when the push came to shove, we lost them all in one fell swoop. This event is good for them to grow some battle experience and not repeat what happened in the past. He then further adds, after lots of thinking, I concluded that we don't need soldiers. All we need is a powerful weapon to make the dragon scared, a prodigy. In other words, Lu Mingfei. Speaking about the S rank, he has finally made it to his dorm where he finds out that his roommate is none other than Finger. The cool lad offers to take his new underclassmen on a tour around the university campus, leading them to an area where the students learn how to use Yanlin, a power that is special from person to person granted to them by their hybrid blood that is a mix between human and dragon. Mastering it can be somewhat hard as we see a kid struggling to control his water power prompting the boys to run away. They end up in front of a half-dead tree, a university symbol representing the death of the Black Dragon King and the birth of a new era. The professor catches up to them, he is looking for Mingfei to undertake a test. The test is to see how he will resonate with the Black Dragon King's call. Legend has it, a long time ago the Dragon King made a roar that was heard across the land, the hybrids who heard it were seen kneeling in the direction of the throne. Later, the people made a music box that contains a text by the Dragon King, making it the beginning of all spirit language. Learning all about that overwhelming lore at once, the main man started to freak out eternally, but the professor assured him everything will be okay and play the recording. The old man started saying, praise be to the awakening of our king. Destruction. New life. When the recording stopped, the professor asked if Mingfei can feel the call of the bloodline. He jumps in preparation to hear our boy unleash a powerful roar, but instead, Mingfei yawned. The main man comments that he didn't feel a thing, just got sleepy waiting for something to happen. The professor couldn't believe it and started theorizing why this happened since no dragon Raja can resist the call of the Dragon King. And after lots of thinking, he comes to a shocking conclusion prompting him to leave the room. Meanwhile, Finger gets to work and breaks the news about what happened on the campus news site. He is the chief editor of the site. The situation got Mingfei feeling down since the upcoming test is all about hearing the voice of the Dragon King and writing down what it says. But Finger tells him no need to worry, he won't go back home as he has his back, in other words, he has the test answers. 
Elsewhere, the student union led by Caesar is discussing their upcoming activities. Nano breaks the news that the S rank doesn't resonate with the Dragon King call, shocking everyone. Outside, the professor is doing some cardio and calling his colleague to drop everything he's doing and meet in the library. Zihan is one of the few people with the highest purity of dragon blood in the academy. Ordinary half-bloods don't even dare to look at him. But Mingfei, he dared to shoot him, so his pedigree must be fine. Professor A tells Professor B, while uncovering some papers from the old times that talk about a white dragon king equal in power to the black king. Legend says, the white king's rebellion was the biggest rebellion in the history of Dragon Raja. His bloodline is said to have been buried with him. Therefore, Mingfei not resonating with the black king and being possibly the first example of the white king's dissident is a huge fine, one that should be subjected to study. However, Professor A doesn't share this sentiment with Professor B, and wishes not to put a gentle kid like Mingfei under examination like a lab rat. So the two professors make a deal. If the kid passes the exam, then Prof B will leave him be. But if he doesn't pass, then he will report it to other parties and fight for him to be treated in the most human way possible. Later at night, a shadowy figure is seen talking to the AI, who seems to have a dual personality, he asks for the new freshman to pass the exam no matter what the AI accepts, and they share an interesting moment. The next day, Mingfei heads to the exam room where other students are gathered. They become confused since the test papers are blank, but Mingfei stays calm knowing beforehand that the test is to write what they see during a hallucination induced by the Black King voice. When the test starts and the voice is played, the kids lose their minds and start doing goofy shit. While Mingfei writes down the answers on his wrist and observes the girl beside him, the only one to not lose her mind beside him. That said, it was just a matter of time till our boy started to see things too. And by things, we mean his little bro, who introduces himself as Lu Mingze, which is also Mingfei's internet catfish name. Hearing this, the main man cringes and asks the kid how he knows, so the kid explains that they are currently in a psychic vision, where everyone can see the deepest hidden things in their heart, which is also the reason why the Mingfei is seeing the kid. But don't worry, the main character is not into young boys as he too wonders why he's seeing the kid. Mingze continues to talk poetically, but the main man is too stupid to understand, so they go back to class, where the kid sheds a tear and then has a dramatic scene with him, which gets cut short when the redhead wakes up Mingfei, telling him he has slept for an hour past the exam, and teases him about the fact that the test only has eight questions, but he wrote nine answers. Back in the dorm, the boys talk about what classes they are gonna take. Finger points out that the class his boy is going to take is currently paused since the instructor is away on a mission. The mission is being held overseas where they manage to locate the bronze city by the power of Yonlin that one of the students possesses. Suddenly, the area got struck by an earthquake cutting the communication briefly between the duo and the ship. The instructor reports back to the headmaster, I, and the principal, who gives him the authority to use a key so they can access the city and by key, they mean a baby with a very high purity blood higher than the A rank Zihan. The instructor gets geared up to take the kid to the gate of the bronze and fire dragon king palace. After catching up with the students, the prof hands the kids a new lifeline and tells them they only have two hours to work with. They get to work immediately. The professor uses his power to create a void for the baby, to use his pure blood and get a key to the other side. When the baby starts crying, the prof puts him back to sleep and gives orders to the students to go in and look for Norton's, the fire dragon king's skeleton. But if they could not retrieve anything or find anything, then they must blow the city. As soon as the professor leaves, the water comes rushing in and the duo enters through the gate hand in hand. Back on the ship, the crew gets images from inside the palace. The professor asks AI to scan the area revealing it's a massive palace built like an ant farm with multiple paths. Loverboy leaves the girl to take sample pics of a massive room, while he goes to find his snake summons location. Aki Novice's dragon language written on the branches of the trees, so the crew asks her to take pics of the branches as they overlap with the path of exploration. While doing so, something weird happens with the chick, her heart rate increases and she starts breathing unnaturally, and the lifeline breaks. Loverboy groups with Aki, and tells her he has found something, but it's too heavy, so they have to warp up their search soon before time runs out. Aki mimuses a little totem on the ground, and when she tries to pick it up, a mechanic in the palace triggers. Aki then sees someone attacking her, but it turns out to be Loverboy. Sheng tells her that he just arrived and saw this big bronze statue following her. Apparently, Aki was under the doll's influence this whole time, and the dragon writings were a catalyst for her hallucinations. After noticing her lifeline was cut, Sheng tells her that he has found this egg that might contain a dragon, so they are good to leave before the time runs out, but then suddenly the walls start moving because of the system Aki triggered earlier. The duo makes a run for it, but soon realizes it's useless as the city was rebooted, and it senses that someone is invading it, so it's closing down. 
Back in the academy, Mingfei wakes up to the sounds of bells ringing. When he tries to get back to sleep, Ming Zhe appears next to him, telling him, This is a death knell. In other words, someone is dying. Ming Zhe then adds, You're about to be in trouble, but it could also be an opportunity. He then asks the main man if he could have any cheat code from a game in real life, what would it be? The latter tells him that he would choose a cheat that reveals the whole map, so the shorty gives him one called Black Sheep Wall and bids him goodbye. Finger appears in front of him trying to wake our boy up. The Afarank escorts him to the execution bureau telling him the alarm means someone's in trouble, so students with high enough rank are called on to help, and that's when they run into Nono. She reminds Finger of his rank and sends him running away. During the emergency meeting, the instructors make it clear that they need to cooperate to find a way out for Sheng and Aki, who got trapped in the City of Bronze. With 20 minutes left till the pair run out of oxygen, the students have to listen to draconic language and use it to decipher a way out, a feat that would take experts years to do. Norma replicated the interface of StarCraft for Ming Fei since he didn't know how to use the college's computers. Remembering Ming Zhe's clue, he typed Black Sheep Wall as a cheat code, all the computers shut down, the academy shuts down, and the whole country loses power, the map suddenly materializes revealing a path for the trapped couple to escape through. The class turns to take a good look at the man behind this breakthrough. Meanwhile, the couple is still underwater trying to get out of their predicament since the city is big. With the help of the key, they figure out they need to go downwards to get out of the city and get back to the ship. The crew calculates how much time it will take for them to do this route, concluding it's enough for them to make back. Sheng tells the commander that he will take his void snakes back to preserve power, thus communication will be interrupted. Sheng gets ready to swim back up, but Aki decides it's not worth, realizing the oxygen is not enough, so she would rather spend her last minutes with Loverboy, whom she confesses to. Sheng in turn kisses and tells her to trust him, there is enough oxygen left for them both to make it out. Back on the ship, the connection to the college is suddenly broken, just like how the professor broke his happy dancing and ordered the crew to drop the ship as low as possible. You see, when making the oxygen calculation, the crew just took into consideration how much the students need to get out of the city forgetting to add the amount of time they need to make it up, so after putting all the numbers together, the professor concluded that it will be too late for them to rise to the surface. Meanwhile, in the academy, Mingfei gets a call from his friend Old Tang. He notices that his boy Mingfei is depressed, so he advises him to hope for the best and pray that things become alright, sending positive energy to the world, no matter how big or small might help. Old Tang is a certified Chad. Back to the sea, it's been 14 minutes since the lifeboats got deployed to look for the kids, and just when the captain was about to give up, he hears the men shouting that someone is coming up, he rushes to see Aki has made it up with the vase alone, Sheng has sacrificed himself to ensure that she makes it back with the vase. Sadly though, the girl gets taken away by something. The heartbroken teacher puts out an order to secure the vase to then takes revenge, which came in the shape of a sniper rifle. The first shot facing the monster eye was truly magnificent, and what soon followed was a nice display of Chinese animation from blasting the bullets away to the beasts jumping out of the water and destroying a helicopter, it was truly amazing. Soon after, the home dropped bombs in the water, but the signal faded away, the monster ate them. When the signal came back, the captain yelled, immediately detonate. The monster's signal disappeared, and the home team was relieved the beast is down. Or so they thought. Suddenly, a sharp object impaled the professor's assistant right in front of him, breaking his heart even more, and to add insult to injury, the dragon surfaced just to laugh at them. Since they cannot donate the bombs again due to the dragon pointing his mouth at them, which will lead the fire to them as if it was dragon breath, the captain ordered the crew to steer the ship towards a dam at maximum power. The beast followed to a certain point and started to slow down, so the prof threatened to destroy the jar. Sensing something bad going to happen to the bronze jar, the monsters stayed hot on their trial. The plan was to use the second bomb blast to push them through the damn gates, while pushing the dragon back to be trapped. Although the plan succeeds, the dragon was the last person to laugh as one of his teeth broke in the blast and hit the professor. Principal Enju called the students after quite a time since the connection signal was lost, he thanked the students for helping and told them that the mission was a success, and thanks to it, they acquired lots of valuable information. He then personally thanked Lu Mingfei for his efforts earning him the admiration of his classmates. Later, when they left the emergency meeting, Mingfei was approached by Zihan, who told him that he would be a worthy successor as president of the Lionheart Society and invited him to join. But the former being a beta loser declined instead of getting angry or anything. Zihan wished our boy good luck and told him he does not doubt that Kizer will try to recruit him, and whether he accept or not, it doesn't matter, since he is glad to have him as a friend or an enemy. Their talk was cut short when a flock of doves was released by the church, while ringing the bells, signaling a death in the school's personnel. 
Back on the ship, the principal meets with his buddy, who has turned into a shish kebab. He tells him to not waste energy. The doctors are coming, but the captain knows his time is up, so he decides to report back everything they found out down in the city. The captain's last wish was to tell the student that he went on another mission, so they don't feel sad for him. The end of part one. Check our other videos and subscribe to not miss the second part. Thanks for watching.